Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Brian Ponce. I am one of the Adobe evangelists here at the University of Arizona. And today we're going to be taking a look at um, Adobe Aero. So um, Aero is basically um, a software that's designed to allow you to create, um, they call them digital immersive um, experiences uh, using augmented reality. Um, and the cool thing about Aero is that you don't need to know how to code to do anything with it, which is nice. So it's great for people who are interested in exploring the space and getting their feet wet with the possibilities of AR um, without having to know how to code everything for it, which is awesome. So we're gonna be focusing on that today. Um, we, like I said, uh, before we started the workshop, we are going to be working with the, uh, primarily with the beta uh, that's on desktop. It's a pretty solid beta. I've only found one thing that kind of is hinky all the time, but it hasn't caused crashes for me. So hopefully that holds here, <laughs> uh, but it's a really cool tool. And I think that, it, and I think that if you understand how the beta works, you'll know exactly how the mobile app works. Uh, they basically have the exact same functions. The benefit of the beta is that we don't have to deal with our camera constantly moving while we're adjusting content. And we'll flip back and forth uh, at least once to the, um, to the mobile app so you can kind of see how it works in real time. But to get started, we're gonna go ahead and jump into um, the, the desktop version. So our goals today are basically kind of to go through the workspace so you're comfortable navigating it. Um, and talk about how we can add elements and things like that. Then we're going to talk a bit about how you can add interactivity to your to the assets that you put inside of your scene. And then we're gonna talk about how to share this content out. And then I'll share a few additional resources. That's kind of the general game plan. Does that work for everybody? Thumbs up is fine, however you wanna work it, uh, but just wanna make sure that we're okay there. All right, please, as always, feel free to ask questions as we go along. I'm decent at monitoring the chat, but should I miss something, um, Alex will have no problem interrupting me and making sure that we um, cover what we need to cover here. Um, if you haven't worked in 3D space before, it can be a little, it can get a little, um, there could be a lot of questions. So feel free to ask them as we go and we will absolutely stop and make sure that we're all comfortable um, with where we're at before we move on. Um, as with all these workshops, you can totally play along with me. Everything that you need is inside of this app um, that I'm gonna be using. But if you just wanna watch and take notes, that's totally fine too. Whatever learning style makes sense for you. I'm really quickly gonna turn off my camera just so that we don't run into any, hopefully no stutter issues, and then we'll get going. Cool. All righty. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is we're gonna go ahead and jump right into, oh, Arrow quit unexpectedly, awesome. <laughs> That's all right. Hopefully we'll be working this beta the entire time. It's just singing its praises. All right, cool. So this is great. <laughs> so when you first launch Arrow, this is what you're gonna be greeted with. You'll see all of your existing projects here. Keep in mind, this is a beta, so things can close. Honestly, any application can crash. The cool thing about Arrow is that it does save as you go to the cloud storage provided to you with your Adobe Creative Cloud account. So you have that. Um, we're gonna go ahead and start by, you'll see the interface is very, very simple. Um, we're gonna go ahead and create a new document. Gonna create a new scene here. And we're gonna give it a title here. I recommend giving it something that you'll remember. So I'll call this, um, call this intro to Arrow workshop. That way I can review it later or delete it easily and find it. You go ahead and hit okay, cool. And then we're greeted with this blank space here. If you've worked with 3D programs, this looks very familiar. Um, so basically it just shows you your planes here. We have uh, 3D, we function X, Y, and Z. So um, we have height, we have width, and then we have depth. Uh, so you have the X, Y, and Z axes that you're working in. You'll see your X, Y, and Z orientation here. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with just kind of moving around the workspace. So on the top left-hand side, you will see um, the plus button. The plus button will let you import assets. This can take a bunch of different types of 3D assets that you have. So if you have some 3D assets you want to incorporate into here. Uh, if your arrow start page is blank, then uh, look for the create new button. Mine has content on it because I've been playing with Arrow for a bit. 
Um, you can also go, so you'll need to create a, a new um, document here. Let's see if I can find the one I just opened. Um, let's see, let's create a new one. Oh, great. I'm glad it worked. Intro two. All right, cool. So now um, we have our regular selection tool. That's V. We will be using all of these tools a little bit as we go. Uh, we have move, scale, and rotate for the individual elements. We haven't brought anything in yet, but when we do, those will make more sense. And then we have orbit, pan, and dolly. So uh, the keyboard shortcuts for that are one, two, and three. Right now, if I just click and drag, I can select stuff. But if I press one and then click and drag, I can orbit or move around 3D space here. That will help you when you start placing objects here. Um, if you press the number two, it will allow you to pan. So click and drag to move around. And then three will do what's called a dolly, which zooms in and out. So we'll be using those a little bit as we start kind of manipulating our elements that we have here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and press the um, I'm going to go ahead and press the V key to go back to the selection tool. Uh, but these are but these will kind of be the central tools that we use to navigate around either our document or the elements that we bring in. Um, let's go ahead and start though by bringing in some bringing in a starter asset so that there's something on the screen to work with. Uh, to get to your starter assets, if you look on the bottom left hand side of your desktop app, you will find this section labeled content. And then you'll find starter assets here. Uh, you have a bunch of different shapes and things like that uh, that you can kind of work with. Um, there are two icons right here. You have 3D models, and then you have images. So we're going to stick with 3D models for now. And then let's go ahead and we will take a look at abstract shapes. So here we have a bunch of different shapes. I'm going to go ahead and bring in this. Um, I'll bring in a cube. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in a cube here. Click on it. It will add it to the scene. And then here's our cube. Now, you'll notice uh, that when you have your cube selected, that this has this little 3D, they call them gizmos. Uh, this gizmo will allow you to move the object in X, Y, or Z space. Uh, when you have those standard selection tools selected, you get this kind of multi-tooled gizmo. Um, so you can click on the green arrow to move vertically or control the Y axis. You can click on the red arrow to move in the X axis, or you can click on the blue arrow here. And the reason why it kind of is a little, um, what's well, a little hard to see here is because we are on, we are staring down the Z axis right here. If you press uh, command, on Mac control on Windows and B that will reset the scene, reset the camera there. So now X, Y, and Z are a little bit easier to grab. We can move these in that 3D space like so. Cool. Making sense so far? I hope so. Cool. Again, let us know if you have any questions in the chat if we need to go over any more of those things. So um, once we have our Starter, once we have an asset in here, we can kind of move it around and put it where we need to. What was the what was the command on Windows? I believe that the command is Command and B as in boy, Control B. Uh, command B on Windows. No, Control B on Windows. <laughs> um, if you go up to your menu, uh, you'll find all of your keyboard commands, and there aren't too many here um, under camera. Um, and then reset camera. That's what we're looking for. Cool. That way you can kind of rotate it around. And again, I'm just going to rotate real quick around it by hitting one to get to the orbit tool. That will allow me to rotate the camera around and then press V to get back to your kind of standard selection tool. And then you move that up, down, left, right. Pretty nice. So this little, uh, when you have the selection tool selected, this is kind of functions as a multi-tool. Um, so let me get zoom in a little bit here. You'll see it continues to scale down, but I'll let's take a look. 
So with this little multi-tool here, we have a few different um, widgets that we can press. The arrows are going to allow us to move in space, to move this into a position. The circles or these little curved things will allow me to rotate. Right, and then um, just like a word processor, controller command Z will undo a last step. So you can rotate, red is gonna be rotating under X, blue is gonna be rotating under Z, which looks like this. I'm just gonna undo, and then green is gonna let you rotate in Y. So that rotation will allow you to set stuff up where you want it. I'm just gonna undo that real quick. And then we have scale, which is these little um, squares. So scale, if you hit any of those scales, it will scale uniformly. We'll talk about how to adjust uh, so that we can do more, uh, so we can uh, scale in a single axis in a moment. But does that make sense so far? Cool little multi-tool. Um, that's nice if you have a single element, but if you have a bunch of elements or you wanna be precise, I highly recommend taking advantage of the individual um, ways to adjust an object so this is kind of a multi-tool here but if i press uh if i press this move tool or the e key then all i have are options for moving it which can be really nice um when you just want to move something and you don't accidentally want to scale it uh there are new widgets in here as well for moving in x and y at the same time then it'll give you kind of like a square to tell you where you were and where you where you're going in that space, which is kind of nice. Um, so as we move through here, we can kind of set that down. Perfect. All righty. So um, any questions so far? Again, we're just kind of going over the move tools and the and those situations. So next up then, please feel free to put questions in the chat. Um, we're gonna go over rotating. So with the object selected, you can press the rotate key or press R, and then this will give you op options for rotating here. Ooh, all right, that's it. All right, cool. So that will give us objects just for rotation. Again, having these, that standard selection tool will give you all of them, but having these kind of isolated can be nice. So. And then uh, the, I believe it's S, will allow us to scale, which is pretty nice. And then um, all of them have this center dot, which allows you to kind of move it along kind of the aligned bottom surface there, which is pretty cool. Any questions so far? Yeah, we're just going over rotating here. Cool. So now that we have an idea of how these tools function, more or less, I will be using those as we kind of go through here and we'll get more complicated in a second, but sometimes just a standard square is the best thing to start out with. Uh, the next thing we'll kind of discuss is actions and how they work. So um, we'll move this where we want. And then under our actions menu is on the right hand side. And you'll notice that we have a scene, then we have a horizontal surface. And then our, this is kind of like our layers panel if we were in an application like Photoshop. We can hide and show different layers. If you're trying to manipulate a bunch of different things on screen, we can lock content so that it can't be moved. It's easy to unlock just by clicking that. But if we go down to actions, this is really where we can kind of uh, get, some, get some kind of quick actions that you might do all the time done. So we have the trash to delete it. You can also press the delete key. Um, you have the duplicate selection tool. So if you click that, it creates a copy. And we can move that copy, and now we have two. You can also um, hit Control C to copy and Control V to paste um, to copy and paste that way if you want. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Cool. And then we have this option to align the selection. So this will kind of align the selection with the, if you, if you click and hold on the Y axis and then drag down, you may notice that at some point, it, it, it has the ability to snap to the floor. Um, this align selection will align this to um, whatever the horse, to whatever the surface is here. Um, and then we have, um, we can revert stuff to the original size. So if we scale this really big, we can hit this kind of revert it back to the original size there. Because as you start scaling these up, 
we do kind of, we can kind of go inside of it, but if it gets too big or it's too small, we can always hit that to get to what the original size of the application was. And that actions menu can be really helpful, especially after you set up a more complex scene to kind of work with your individual objects here and then. Um, I'll show you in a little bit a more complicated, um, a, a more complicated scene that I set up earlier, but you can also click on the layers here to select specifically the thing you want to work with. Cool. Any questions so far? All right. Cool. So next up um, is the properties panel. So properties is going to be uh, be right under actions. And this will allow you to be a little bit more, um, I'll call it microscopic with how you <laughs> make adjustments here. Uh, so what you'll do, um, you, you'll see that you, you can move these using your arrows or using these guys here, but you also have all of the same functions that these buttons give you, but with kind of dials that you can kind of uh, dial in. So you'll notice if you hover over any one of these, so we have X as a position here, I can click and drag up to move it forward in space or backward on, on X uh, on the X axis. You can do the same thing with Y. You can do the same thing with Z. You can also dial in specific parameters if you know exactly where you want it to be. Like if I know that I want this to be right in the center, I can just press zero, zero, zero. Or if I know I want this to be 10 centimeters in the Y axis, you just type in 10. So you have all of those options for any of these guys. And then you have the same kind of functions for rotation here. Um, so you can dial in 90 degrees or 45 degrees or whatever the case may be. Kind of put it right where you want it. And then I'm going to use the orbit tool. Just going to see where we're at. So I can orbit and then make that adjustment just by going back to the selection tool, selecting this guy and then adjusting the rotation. So if I wanted these to kind of be offset a little bit, I could do that. Again, just select the one you want and make the adjustment. Cool. So next up is scale. And you'll notice that scale um, is locked by default. Uh, that's, that's because when you scale these, typically you're not going to want to skew them too much. But let me go ahead and hit Command B or Control B to kind of reset here. And I will set this rotation back to zero. And then I will hit this little button to put it on the ground here and pull it forward a little bit. This rectangle, this uh, box is great. But what if I wanted it to be a rectangle? Um, if I went to the scale tool, I, when I hit this button to scale in the X direction, it all scales up uniformly because it's locked. So if I go to scale and, unlo and, and unlock it so that I can, um, so I can scale ununiformly, then I should be able to, and the little open latch indicates that it's unlocked, should be able to click and drag to stretch this out. Because maybe I wanted to put stuff inside the this like rectangular box. And I can kind of scale that how I want. Cool. And that makes sense so far? What questions do we have about these tools? And then um, size is basic. Scale is going to be like the amount of times bigger than the initial object was. Size is the actual size in centimeters and uh, because this, because the idea of AR is that we are kind of going you know, kind to of be living in actual space. So knowing that distance can be helpful, especially if you're trying to kind of build something that's built for maybe like a tabletop versus a um, versus like a big art installation or something. Cool. So far, so good. All right. Cool. So moving on, what we're going to talk about next. Um, we're going to go ahead and we talked a bit about gizmos already, which is awesome. Um, before we move on, because this next part kind of relies on it, how are we feeling about uh, the gizmo idea and how we would manipulate that? I'll give it a second. Grab a sip of water at the same time. Fantastic. The good news is... <laughs> <laughs> the good news is that if you understand kind of this 3D space element, um, uh, there are a number of 3D applications. Um, they're all very different in how they function, but the X, Y, and Z and the pan and orbit tools often are similar in a lot of these. So if you understand that, 
you'll hopefully have a little bit of a heads up when you jump into other 3D applications or you start working with 3D inside of um, an application like After Effects or something. All right, cool. So now that we've got a box and a crooked box, <laughs> let's add something else. Um, we're gonna go ahead and we're, I'm gonna go ahead and open up uh, just because it's our mascot for this workshop. If you go to the workshop page, our image that we chose for today is a fox. <laughs> uh, so under our starter assets, if you go down to nature and plants and you scroll, or is it, oh, I'm sorry, origami forest pack. That was the one. You will find a bunch of little origami animals. And go ahead and let's find the fox. And then we'll just click on it to add it to our scene. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and um, just with the regular um, 3D gizmo, I'm going to go ahead and move on the Z axis and pull this forward so we can see it. And then I'm going to go ahead and orbit my camera. We press one to get to the orbit tool. And then I'm going to just orbit this so it's a little bit easier for me to see. Then I'm going to press three to kind of dolly in. Have you ever seen like a movie where they're doing, um, where they're shooting it and then the camera's on like rails and a track? That system is called a dolly system. So we're dollying and we're pushing the camera forward. Um, most of you probably knew that already, but just for those who may not have, it was interesting to me when I found out. <laughs> um, cool. So we dolly and we see the fox. It looks great. Um, so now that we have the fox here, we're going to talk about um, how we can add how we can add behaviors to our um, elements uh, to have them kind of execute functions based off of a trigger. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and click on the selection tool. V is the shortcut key. Works most of the time. Uh, <laughs> then we're going to go ahead and click on uh, behavior builder. So when I click on behavior builder, this is where we will, this is where we will design our, um, how, how these things interact once they're placed in a scene. Um, so what we're gonna do first, we have to start with a, so uh, adding the interactivity to our assets involves two things. We need to set up triggers and actions. The trigger is what makes the action happen. So we set what makes it happen, then we set how it happens. Set what makes it happen with triggers, set how it happens with actions. Um, and certain 3D models have actions built in, and we're going to take advantage of that for uh, this particular fox here. So to start, we're going to click on trigger, and then we're going to decide how we want this trigger to start. I'm going to go there start, which is basically when we enter the AR experience, the action starts. Um, we're going to go ahead and set... Um, we're going to go ahead and set the trigger for tap, though, because I'd like to touch it to make it work. So when I hit tap, then it's going to ask me to uh, add an action. And you can see I have one trigger. I can have multiple triggers set up. And I'll show you a different scene here in a little bit where I have a number of triggers set up on a single action. Uh, so if I go to action here, um, I know that there's an there's some animation built into this, and the way that you can tell, and it's a little bit hard to see on my screen, but if you go to our um, resources uh, document under starter objects, you might notice that uh, some of these little guys have this little motion symbol right here. It's a circle with three smaller circles in it. A little hard to see on my screen, but uh, there's a great illustration on the support document. That means that there's an animation or an action built into here. So we're going to go ahead and take advantage of that. So we're going to click on, so we so our trigger is tap, action, play animation is what we're looking for. And then under play animation, we can hit this play button to preview it. So let's go ahead and hit play once. And we'll see there's our little guy bouncing around. And the cool thing about the, the cool thing about all these starter assets is that they'll typically go back to where they started, which is really nice. Um, in these Adobe, uh, with these Adobe provided ones. So we're gonna go ahead and set that up. Uh, we can adjust the clip length as well. So the clip lasts uh, 8.67 seconds. We can adjust that if we want to. Um, then we're gonna go ahead and we can adjust the speed of it too. So if we like that frolic, but it's a little slow for our tastes, we can speed it up. Uh, just by clicking and dragging on this slider here. 
Nassim moves a little faster, which is cool. All righty. So now um, we'll play with the rest of these in a second, but let's go ahead and click on, we're in the edit menu. Let's go to preview here. And this will allow us to preview our design here. So this is us simulating what looking at this through AR would look like. So we can kind of click through, uh, you'll see the orbit tool is kind of set up by default. Uh, pan and zoom would be physically moving in your camera. So let's go ahead and click on the Fox and we'll see that the animation plays. Cool. We can even click on him from far away and he'll do the same animation. So this is kind of the idea. What we're going to wind up doing is building a little scene for this guy to live in. And you can use assets that are here. You can use um, assets, uh, 3D assets from other places. We're going to go ahead and continue to stick with this. Uh, so, so far, so good. All right, cool. So now let's go ahead and we will make um, one of these boxes move now. I'm going to go ahead and use my orbit tool to click and drag up. I'll zoom out a little bit. I'm just using my trackpad. Uh, you can also use the dolly tool. And we're going to grab this box. And we're going to make it do something kind of unnatural. I'm going to move it up here. And we're going to set up a different action for this box. So if we go to trigger, um, and then we're going to make it do, we're going to do start. So that it does this when, the anim when we start the preview. We're going to hit action. And then we're going to do spin. Cool. And if we hit the play button, we'll see this box spins. We can choose the axis that we want it on. Do we want it on the X, Y, or Z axis? I'm going to go ahead and go with X. It spins like that, right? Uh, we can set the duration. Let's make this duration like one second. So really fast spin. It's probably too fast, actually. <laughs> so we'll do 1.5. We'll split the difference here. Cool. So you can see that action kind of happen, right? Um, so if we go under, we have this easing section, which, tell, which uh, indicates kind of how this ramps up and slows down. If you want to feel natural, ease in, ease out is the default. Um, but we're, so we're going to leave that be. We can choose a play count. And we can even choose a delay here. So if I wanted to stop spinning for like 0.5 seconds and then start again, I can increase my play count to two. And we'll see that kind of take place. Cool. Um, we can also set an infinite spin. So if we just want to kind of move all the time, we can hit, hit infinite there. And let's go to preview. And we'll see that that box spins kind of naturally. So maybe if you're trying to draw somebody's eye with a 3D object, we could do that. But that's kind of what we're going for. Cool. All righty. So now, um, we can stack things too. And we'll just use the, we'll continue to use the box because it's simple here. So we have spin, right? Under start, if we hit the plus button under spin, we can add an additional thing. So if we wanted to bounce as well, um, we can set bounce here. And we'll see that it bounces. So maybe um, we, can, we can move this down a little bit. So we kind of see that bounce happen a little bit more naturally then it will bounce for us. Um, and we can do rebounds on it. Rebounds are going to make it feel more natural. So that works for me. Um, and then we can set the play count for it. Um, so if we just wanted to bounce infinitely, we could do that. And then if we go to back to preview, it should bounce and spin. <laughs> and you'll see it's kind of all over the place, but the idea is, and we'll orbit real quick. We'll see that it kind of has like a pre-built animation where it kind of bounces and spins around. It's going crazy. Probably don't want it to do infinite. <laughs> um, so let's adjust that one more time. We're going to set it to back and forth. That way it will kind of bounce and then bounce back is the idea. So kind of cool. But the idea is that we have, when we select these actions, we have all of these different kind of interactions we can do. Um, cool. Any questions so far? Okay. Cool. 
All righty. So from here, let's go ahead and we will, um, we'll go ahead and we'll add a few other assets here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this box. And we're gonna try and make like a bit more of an, an actual environment for this guy. I'm gonna hit command and B or control and B to reset. I'll move this box over here for now, just selecting it and moving it over. I'm gonna add a mountain. So if I go to this origami thing and hit mountain, you could add whatever you wanted. There's nature and plants and all sorts of other assets here. Pick what you like. I'm going to go ahead and add a mountain. And the mountain's kind of small, so I'm going to scale it up uh, using the scale tool. Hit S, scale up. Zoom out a little bit. And now there's a little mountain for him to, for our fox to live by. Cool. Um, and then we can unlock the scale if we want and just adjust the scale on the, so it's a little bit flatter, maybe a little wider. So there's a little more of a slope to it. You'll see it's kind of eating up our fox a little bit. That's okay. We can select the fox using this uh, scene tool here to select just the fox. Then we'll switch to the move tool and pull them forward. Then we'll kind of move this box over here. We'll keep the bouncing box. Awesome. And if we go to preview, we'll see that we kind of have this a bit more expansive little area here and that box is going crazy. We'll let it be crazy. Cool. All righty. So now let's go ahead and we will um, add a few other elements here. One of my favorite things uh, that, uh, that um, can be done here is this. So let's go ahead and we'll go down and we'll grab this sun origami layer here. Brings up the sun, we'll move it up. We'll make it nice and big, just using the scale tool here. Oops, so see how that's kind of stretching? That's because this scale layer is unlocked. So let's lock it back up. We will scale it up. All right. All right. So next, um, we're going to go ahead and preview this. I'll we'll see that everything's kind of static, right? And I can see the back of the sun. Maybe I don't ever want my um, use my the person who's interacting with this to ever see the back of that sun. There's something we can do to make it so that that's the case. So if we go back to edit, then we go to trigger, and we'll go to start. Then we'll add an action. That action is going to be aim. So we can take uh, any 3D object and aim it at a specific location. That could be an individual thing um, or a um, or whatnot. So let's go ahead and try that. So we'll hit aim here. And then in our menu here, we have aim. The subject is the sun. Then we choose the target it aims at. So let's start with that open cube and then we'll hit the preview button and see what happens and we'll see that the sun kind of follows that cube which could be helpful if you had two things that you wanted to kind of constantly look at each other there are tons of applications for something like that oh whoops i stopped the sharing let's share the screen again <laughs> all right let's go back there we go All right, so um, let's go ahead and adjust the aim though. We'll go to aim and then we'll set the aim. This is a bit more common. We want this to target the camera. So that when we get a preview, the sun's gonna follow us wherever we're at. So we never have to, so we never see the back of it. Um, we're using a 3D object here, but this could be used with 2D objects. Like if you had text um, that was, on an object and you wanted that to always be forward facing, you could do that. Um, but I want to make sure that you knew about that aim function here. Cool. All righty. So, so far, so good. Where did all my chat go? There we go. Awesome. All righty. So um, next up, now we've kind of talked about a few functions here. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like on a mobile device here. So 
Go ahead and go back to home. I will stop sharing for this so I can share something else. over here giving this a second i have something pre uh previously prepared if it doesn't hopefully it does um go ahead and stop sharing here and i will share one more time screen share Perfect. Awesome. Cool. So hopefully you can see my iPad screen. I think y'all can. Um, pull up the chat one more time just so I can see it. Great. So uh, it doesn't look like the other thing is loaded yet. Uh, let me go ahead and come back here. It hasn't loaded yet, but good news is I have something else prepared. Um, so what we can do now is we can um, open up a document. And this is what it looks like when you're on a mobile app. So this was a document I prepared on the desktop, intro to arrow. Tap on that. It's going to take a moment to open our scene. Then you all, you're all going to get to see my very organized desk, desk here very shortly. Cool. So when you start a project um, on arrow, on your, um, on your mobile device, it's gonna start looking for surfaces to place your objects on. So see, it's kind of found that flat plane. Um, we're using a horizontal plane, but you could set a vertical plane if you wanted. Let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and set this right here. Awesome, and I'll grab this camera and move it a little, move, move the microphone a little closer to me. Cool. So now we're going to place this. And everything that we did on the desktop, you can totally do on mobile. This is just kind of a pre-made scene here. We're going to tap. And then this is the space that we're going to be working in. Um, and we'll see. There's, there's you. And then there's the chat. <laughs> um, but here's a scene that I built earlier. Um, the moon is set to kind of orbit with us. But this is the edit menu, just like on the desktop app. So. What we can do is we can tap on individual elements to edit them. So kind of like we saw before on the desktop app, we have move, rotate, scale, and behaviors. So if I tap on behaviors here, we can see um, that this little wolf right here um, has some behaviors set up, including playing his animation and adding some audio. Um, so uh, to create these, they're very, very similar. You just tap on the tap section here, we will close that. Um, and then hit the plus button to add the element that you want. You'll see a lot of the same animals here. The one I added was play audio. And then I have this little wolf sound MP3 here. Let's see if it plays. Let's play my headphones. Could y'all hear that? <laughs> I hope so. Um, it's a wolf howling. It's pretty cool. Um, so we have these kind of two triggers set up here. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll preview these. And we'll show you what this looks like kind of an actual space. So we hit preview. We'll prepare the scene. And let me know if you guys can hear that. Um, I have this sound set up on it where you can hear kind of like just nighttime sounds. Hopefully you all can hear that. Um, and then we have this kind of scene happening here. You see that we have a bunch of different things such a trigger. We have a proximity trigger on this little bear here. Maybe I'm too close. <laughs> but the idea with a proximity trigger is that as we get close, it animates. Unless I didn't set that up right. We may have to play with that. Um, but the wolf, we tap on it. He plays a little animation and howls. We have this deer right here. That's on an animation loop with a little bit of a delay, getting some water. We have a horse over here that we can tap on. We can add sound to that as well later. And then there's a little owl on the mountain over here. And then we have some clouds kind of moving in the sky. 
And we'll see that they're both like bouncing up and down and rotating and orbiting around this mountain right here. And then if I, and this moon is following us wherever we go, see it's always forward facing. And then if we look in the back, to really see how messy my desk is. <laughs> Look down there, there's some little animals scurrying about along with my keys. And there's little fox moving around doing his thing. And you guys see the notes for this workshop. <laughs> uh, but generally, the idea is that we want to create um, an experience that has like multiple elements for people to see and work with so that there's kind of because people are kind of choosing how they consume. Um, this content right we set up the experience for them but then they get to choose how they interact with it that's really kind of some of the magic of what ar offers here and arrow makes it really easy um, for us to kind of create those experiences cool all right go back to edit here and we can come back and edit and then these two programs are uh these two programs have the same kind of set the same capabilities, just that this one is um, in the space that we're at. And the and the desktop one is on the computer here. So if you're developing an AR experience, say for like an actual installment somewhere, starting on your phone or the iPad can be great to kind of get the initial scale and set up where things are. But then you could continue to work on it on your computer and have way more kind of control over exactly where the elements are sat in the space, if that makes sense. Cool. All right. Go ahead and stop the mirroring here. And we'll go back to the desktop. Let's see here. Let's stop share. So question was asked, am I using Arrow on a mobile app? I am. I'm using it on an iOS device. So I'm using it on an iPad. Um, I know that Arrow is in beta. Um, uh, the Arrow player is in beta on Android devices. Um, you just search the app store for Arrow. I think if uh, I can dig up where the player is, but if you're working on an Android device, you'll typically be building... Um, yeah, you'll typically, let's see, what does it say? Yeah, so you have an early access to the beta, which is, which, is, uh, which is the player for this. So that will play back what you build in Arrow. Um, iOS devices allow you to build inside of Arrow. Um, I assume that that functionality is coming to iPad, uh, coming to Android devices at some point, but uh, the player is available on Android for now. Great question. Because I still think you can, you still can build experiences here. You just won't have the ability to build off of the, build off of the device, if you're on Android. Yeah, the experience is for iPad right now. Cool. All righty. What questions do we have before we kind of um, dig a little bit deeper into what we built and how we built it? I'm gonna go ahead and queue up this guy here. I have a question for you. Has this been helpful so far? I feel like you're grabbing a few things about Arrow and what it's capable of. Hope so. It's built to be really simple um, and easy to use and built kind of for you to be able to design quickly here. Um, <clears throat> like I said before, you can, there are a bunch of 3D elements here that you can use in, um, and manipulate that do all sorts of different things. I chose, Go ahead and take command B here. Uh, I will zoom in so we have something nice to look at. Um, I chose these origami things because they all kind of play well together, but there are tons of different bits here. Uh, like one of my favorites is um, I like the helicopter quite a bit. Actually, let me show you a cool actual helicopter if arrow didn't close on me. It may have closed on me. All right. It is a beta. <laughs> um, so we'll give that a second to open up. Cool. Then 
open this scene again. And if it doesn't work, I'll jump over to the iPad here. Um, so one kind of cool thing you can do is let's go ahead and go with helicopter. Uh, we will ignore for now. All right, and then we'll move this helicopter over. So if we go to helicopter here and we go to our behavior settings, should I hit one to orbit a little bit, just so it's a little bit easier for me to see. Cool. Go to behaviors, trigger, start, action, play animation, helicopter flying. So let's take a look at that. So it kind of takes off, which is cool. And I'll kind of loop that over and over again. So I'll turn on. Ooh, <laughs> okay. We'll bring it in by itself maybe next time. Thanks for your patience, everybody. <laughs> um, we'll jump over to the iPad here in a second if this doesn't play nice. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Give that a second. All right. We will ignore for now. We'll definitely report later. All right. I'm going to go ahead and queue up. And actually, we'll just go over to the um, mobile device if that's cool. All right, cool. And so resume, and we'll share again. iPad. Cool. Should be able to screen mirror right here. Awesome. I want to show you one more action, and then um, we'll see what questions that we have. So, so cool. So you can see that. Um, one cool thing about the Arrow app, and I'm on the iPad, iPhone has similar functions. If you go under learn, there is a make your first scene bit. So it'll kind of walk you through creating your first scene with Adobe Arrow, which is cool. So we go to home here, we're gonna create a new thing. We will find some surfaces. I'll move my keyboard out of the way. Pull up the chat here before I do, just in case. Any questions? Cool. So we move this around to find surfaces. There's a laser pointer. It's for the cats. <laughs> and then we will um, tap the surface to create an anchor. This selects where basically the floor is. Cool. So there's that. Then we'll go to the plus button here. We'll go to starter assets. We'll come down to transportation toys. And we'll see that all of these have the little three circles in the bottom right hand side, which means that they have. Um, which means they have some built-in animation. We're gonna go ahead and go again with the helicopter. I'll give it a second to load. And then we will tap to place the asset. This is a good idea to do anyway. Just so you can kind of see what this looks like on the iPad as you're working. Tap to set it and then we can kind of move around it, see what it looks like in that space. We'll tap on it again. And we'll scale, I'm gonna go ahead and scale this down a little bit. Again, you'll see we have the same kind of 3D um, gizmos here. I'm gonna just scale this on the x-axis ever so slightly. There we go. Cool. And then once that's scaled how I want it, I can rotate it for the start position. We have the reset button here if we mess up. Let's go ahead and rotate this. And also dial it in or just use these sliders that might even be a little bit easier. Cool. This iPad's heavy. <laughs> um, then we'll go to behaviors, trigger. Let's go with start, action. And then we're gonna go ahead and go with, um, play animation. We come down to the bottom, just like before. We're gonna set that play count to infinite. 
but we're going to give it a delay of like two seconds. Cool. Play animation. Cool. We're going to preview. And then if we did that right, Cool, so now it's kind of hovering, right? So if we go back to edit and we go back to behaviors, you may notice that we have this kind of daisy chain here, start, play animation, then action. If I tap on action, I can add an additional action. And what I would like this to do is I would like this to do what's called a path move. And I want it to happen afterwards. So if I go to, Create new animation. We're going to hold the object for three seconds. We're going to uncheck fix to ground. And then, oh, oh, whoops. I messed that up. So let's go ahead and retake. I'm going to keep this held down. I can move this around the space here. We can refine it later, but the idea is that now, hopefully this plays through. Cool. I'm going to see that we can kind of define the movement just with our finger, which is super cool. We can go through and we can do a bunch of path smoothing to make it look easier. Like this to behave like a helicopter. Play. And we'll hit save. And then we'll hit that and we'll see how it went. And then we'll see it kind of moves around based off of where I set it which is super cool. So this is a way for you to kind of create more complex interactions here. And you'll see under the edit menu, under the path, we have this set under start, right? But if we wanted this to be a separate trigger, which might be more helpful, I can remove this path here, delete that, and then go under a second trigger, make that trigger tap, and basically do the same thing. Action, behaviors, path to move. Like the helicopter will have this start after like a second of pressing it. We'll do the easing is ease in, ease out. Uh, and then we will create new animation. We have to have that create new animation in order to start it. You have to hold the object for three seconds. I think I have it set to behave like a car. So <laughs> maybe that would work better for a car. I do. All right. Try that one more time. Let's see how it behaves. There we go. And we'll hit save. And if we preview it, All right, you know, preview and check it out. But essentially, that's kind of what we can do here. And um, I think I, I think I messed this up actually. So let me go ahead and undo that. If it doesn't work out, try it again. So path, subject, helicopter, easing, linear, and then. Where was create new animation? We want to uncheck fix to ground. And then we hit behave as helicopter. Cool. Close that. Then we'll record the animation. Again, rest your finger on the object for three seconds. And then we can kind of move it up, move it around, and move our camera as well. Now we can fly over here and then land. Cool. 
we'll hit save. Then we'll go to check mark. Looks good. We'll preview that. And then we'll see that the animation starts automatically, right? But if we tap on it, then it will kind of fly around. We can follow it <laughs> kind of around. If we had chosen plane, it would have rotated like in space, but it's kind of set to hover right now. But the idea is that we can kind of create these animations that people that will kind of have their own paths. It's really easy to do with your finger. You can do it with mouse movements on the uh, computer as well. Cool. All right, sweet. So there's our helicopter there. <laughs> it's kind of hovering. Uh, let me go ahead and stop the share here. I'll reopen. Sweet. Sweet. So uh, that was kind of a brief look at um, Arrow, both.